Well, you're in luck because today we're going to build an internet clock using just a few components. OK, so let's see what we need for the build then. So first in is the brains of the clock, which is an ESP32 dev kit from AZ Delivery. But any ESP32 will be fine. So we'll need something to display the time on. And I chose an inexpensive display from Adafruit which has got an SPI interface and it's called the ST7735 which is a 1.8 inch display with a resolution of 128 by 160. You're also going to need a box to house it in, some strip board or vero board depending on what part of the world you come from, some female board headers to plug in the ESP32 and also to connect the switch and display, a slide switch for daylight savings time, 10 female to male cables which can plug into our board header and the other end plugs into our display. If you don't have these then any multi-core small cables will do or can be soldered on. A handful of small 3.5mm nuts and bolts about a centimetre long and finally a 3.5mm cutting tool. This will also enable us to make holes for mounting or if not, just use a 3.5mm drill bit with some masking tape wrapped around its shank, which is the part that would normally be held in the drill chuck. You're also going to need a soldering iron and some solder. In this clip of the project, I need to cut some holes to mount a display panel and also a switch. I have used a Stanley knife to carefully, very carefully, cut lines in the plastic, but I took great care with what I was doing, having done this many times before. But this may have resulted in cut fingers if I had not been exceptionally careful. Please do not do what I do. Do not follow me in this particular clip, as this is not instructional. It is for entertainment purposes only. OK, so this is the box that we're going to use. So I've marked this out with a vernier caliper to get the exact measurements. We're going to try with this to cut it out, which could be fun. So this could take a while and I might have to speed up the video. So let me start Let's mark the line where we're going to be cutting. Oh, we're going to have to do this many, many times. And we've done it. Whew. Right, that's probably all right. Because when there's a back on this, you won't see you won't see any light from the inside. What you will see is the backlight shining through here. But actually, I think that will be quite nice. So um, I'll leave this masking tape on it at the moment. And now, what we need to do cut down the Vero board and position it on the top side so that we know exactly where everything is going to go. Right, so this is going to be the back, although it looks like the top. We're going to be making that the back and it's going to sit like this. So our, our Vero board is going to sit in there like so. The idea will be to have this sit like that on the Vero board or like that put it this way actually that's probably going to be better and then put the switch over there I think that's the way we want to do it so we'll make everything else fit because there is plenty of room there for this see in there I think that will be fine so let's get a switch right so this needs to be positioned in there so it can go up or down OK, so that's it for that. OK, so we're now ready to assemble the ESP32 board on what will be the back of the box. I've already fitted the switch into the hole that we cut earlier. but unfortunately drilled two mounting holes for the Vera board, one of which ends up being entirely in the wrong place. This is because I realised that the board needed to be as far right as possible later. And that's because the micro USB cable is not vertically in line with the exit. But that's OK, these things happen in construction sometimes. So at this point, I'm trying to locate the right place for the female board connectors, the headers. And that's because we need to just make sure everything's in the right place. 
so it's just turning it over now and now I'm going to start to solder it. Some of those pins require two connections so we're going to be soldering two strips on that bottom side of the chip. What I'm doing is doing them one at a time and I'm not doing them with the dev kit in there because I don't really want to have the dev kit in there after there's lots of heat on the board. So the idea is to get these edge connectors on first and then carry on and do the insertion of the SP dev kit and then solder that. Uh, now I need some more. So I've got two bits. I've got that one and I've got that one. And together they should make up the number that we want. The only trouble is that one's at an angle so I need to carve that off somehow so it doesn't look slanted. And for that I'm going to use a file. Okay, so now I can uh, go ahead and solder the dev kit in there. And then after that, we'll go on to the next stage, which will be mounting the dev kit. Okay, so have a look under the magnifying glass. A close inspection. I don't see any bridges. There's one pin that could do with a bit more solder. So I'll just touch that up. Right, so that looks all right now. So remember, we've got 3.3 .3 volts uh, on that pin there, and we need to jump it to there so that these two pins on the end get 3.3 .3 volts as an output, which will go to the display. So I'll do the bridge on this side actually, just here. There you go. Obviously we need to cut the tracks between all the pins, otherwise we'll be shorting out all the pins, and we don't want that. Now I'm going to cut the pins off. So, I'm going to do that by shielding them because I don't want them... These ping off all over the place, and you really don't want them in your electronics. I'm shielding these, and these are still coming at me, actually. But at least they're not pinging all over the bench. Just had one hit me in the lip. <laughs> Finally, we've got that all the way over there, and that will only have the smallest amount of... It can't get any further away from that, really. And I think that will be fine. So, that's what I'm going with. So Okay, so now we've got the positioning right, uh, it's time to do some tests. So that's what I'm going to do with the multimeter. I've got to make sure that we haven't got any adjacent track shorts and pins opposite each other are also not shorted. It only takes a uh, few seconds to do, so it's always best to do that. Okay, so that's good. All good. I'm going to test that this works uh, by plugging in a USB to it. Just want to make sure it's all working still. Any old program. Unfortunately, I forgot to film me testing the ESP32. Well, with the ESP approved now to be working, let's go and wire up the display. Okay, so here's the wiring diagram. There aren't many connections to do, but I'll just briefly take you through it. So at the top, you've got the ESP32 and all its pinouts. So that comes straight from the manufacturer. And uh, you've got every possible pin designation on there. Where there are red dots, these are the ones we're using. So that might help. So on the left side, we've got a table uh, and all of the pin types. So you've got 3.3 .3 volts ground and GPIO pin 18, for example. So GPIO pin 18 is there and so forth. Um, so it should be really easy to do. Uh, the one thing that I haven't drawn on here, uh, but I put a note on here, is that GPIO pin 1 
which hasn't got a red dot on it, that will be grounded to either enter or leave the DST mode. Um, so the switch will have to be wired up to that pin, TX0, which is GPI01, and also to ground. And we'll cover that in the video that follows. And on the right hand side, you have obviously the ST7735 and all its pins. So for the display, and this is the naming of the pins on the AS delivery ESP32, and these are the colors that I've chosen. Let's go to the little video where we just put it all together. Right, so uh, we've got to the part now where we need to wire this thing up. Now, um, what I did off camera, and it's the only thing that I've done off camera, is to wire these two wires here into ground and GPIO1 uh, and that basically is the pin that senses whether you're asking the clock to go into daylight savings time or not so it's simply a short or not a short on these two pins from ground to GPIO1 which has got a put up resistor internally so if it's open it will sit high and if it's closed then it will be taken down to ground and the code will sense it and then go into daylight saving time or otherwise. So you will have seen from the diagram that I've just shown you, we've got an order uh, starting from the top, which is the LED, serial clock, uh, serial data, A0, reset, chip select, ground and VCC. So there you go in the order as you saw on the diagram, which is orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, grey, black and white. Uh, which is exactly the pattern opposite to what I put in there. <laughs> so white should be at the bottom, actually. Good job you do these checks. You know, I'm just testing you to make sure that you're uh, you're on your toes and you're not missing anything that I'm saying. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, all I need to do now is actually plug these into the relevant sockets near the microcontroller. And we should be in business. So the orange, which is the LED, should go to 3.3 volts so that's an easy one because that's the very last pin over here comes from 3.3 volts over there and was bridged across if you remember and there's the last two there and the one next to it is ground so that was orange and yellow goes to gpio 18 and it is this one here green goes to gpio 23 which is this one blue goes to gpio 02 which is this one Purple, now that goes to 4, which is this one. Grey goes to GPIO 5, it's there. And black obviously goes to ground, and the ground we know is there. And white, which is the last one, goes to 3.3 volts. So that shares 3.3 volts with that. So what I'll do is I'll hold this up to the camera a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. See how close we can get to the camera. So I think we've got that right. Right, so that is the wiring now complete. And the next thing we're going to do is go on to the code. Uh, but if you're unsure about any of the wiring, don't worry about it because all this stuff will be posted on the GitHub. So let's get on with the next bit. Okay, so welcome to the code section. We're in the Arduino IDE version 2.21 at the time of filming was the latest version. I recommend that you actually get the latest version updated. Here we have the sketches on these tabs and some of these uh, supporting CPPs and .h files. If I go into the tools menu, we've set up the board for an ESP32 dev module. And I think I've got the board rate at 115,200. I've typed in NTP on the library manager here and you can see that this is used here for the NTP client. That's done by Fabrice Swineberg and this is maintained. So that's a good library. That's what we're going to need to connect to our NTP servers. We've also got the attendant things that we need, like the Wi-Fi. All of these three enable us to get onto the network and to connect to the server. We've also got these two libraries here and here. The helpers are just some methods that I needed for this code and my display. So that's for the ST7735 Adafruit display unit that we're going to be using. I'm going to assume you've got some basic coding knowledge and some basic familiarity with the IDE from Arduino. I'm not intending to go down to the fine levels either of the coding. It's something that you can do for yourself. You'll, you'll be able to get hold of the code from the GitHub uh, after the end of the video and read through the code. And I've commented the code anyway so it tells you what the individual bits do. So it should be fairly straightforward for you. Uh, before we run through the main script, I'm just gonna go into the display and show you what you've got available in there. So 
we've just got these things like the initial setup for it so it chooses the black tab it sets the rotation and sets the text wrap to false and then we've got some other things like these are custom display things like we're going to show you the connect status we're going to show you display time and the display date info string like Wednesday October the 27th whatever then you've got a screen update so that will just update the time uh, in terms of the helpers we've got something which calculates the suffix for the dates which is for each day of the month you've got a suffix it will be a first or and or a third like third these two do a formatting for the various strings and this one is just a utility to change from a string to a character pointer uh, so that's that. Uh, then we've got some defines. So the defines are just really a friendly name for an expression or a value. And those uh, names will be used later on in the code. So this would be the password if it was actually written there uh, and the ID of the router. That's what you'll need to connect to your router. This will be the address of the NTP server. Now there's a list of public uh, NTP servers around the world uh, that are free to use as long as you don't take the mic out of them by thrashing them with requests all the time otherwise you might get blocked so use the one that's most appropriate to you I'm in the UK so I'll be using this one but there are others that you can use you could use one in America it doesn't really matter but I just use the one that's closest to me um, daylight saving if your location requires daylight saving offset uh, when the nights are longer or shorter then that's the value in seconds so this would be one hour 3600 seconds and then we got a period between syncs that is the period between you synchronizing with an NTP server and the next one so I recommend that you don't do it any more frequently than once every 24 hours but currently this is set to 10 million eight hundred thousand which is three hours uh, because that's in milliseconds not seconds so we got the DST switch that's the pin that the switch goes into and tells us whether we're asking the code to take note of this offset some loop controls is it the first time we're going to go th we're going through the loop this is a toggle for the colon this is the last known state of the switch because it will change when you change it from daylight to non daylight saving so the code has to know that it's changed from what it was and then we just set up the ntp client right so there's a little bit of code to say get connected this is what we call from the setup and so we've got a connected tries 30 there and that just says we'll try 30 times to connect and if we don't we'll give up if we give up we'll just say we've given up or we'll say we're connected and then it will return a true or a false that means false i didn't get connected true i did and the pin mode the dst switch uh, is on gpio number one and it's saying that that's an input and it's also got a pull up resistor internally so if the switch is closed it will be low if the switch is open it will go high if we didn't have the put up there it would just float anyway there's a serial debugging statement facilitator there so we're saying we're going to start the serial interface so the screen tft and the air screen are just setting up the screen as you've already seen I showed you that so this code here is just saying right what is the switch current position and i'm going to say on the screen it's either on or it's off okay then i'm going to say go and get connected it'll either come back with a false i couldn't get connected and it will just loop forever do nothing till you reset it or it will say i got connected which should actually say success that's a copy and paste error <laughs> and then we set up the time client we're initializing that with the net udp the ntp server name and also the milliseconds between ntp syncs on the dst check um, we clear the screen we say what is the latest current switch state we then say is it high yeah it's high so daylight savings is off is it low no, it's on and then we say the last known switch was the current DST switch state so if it changes again we'll know uh, and then we force an update now that means we'll also go and check NTP server we're just ignoring in that statement the interval and then we put on the screen clear screen and then we update the screen with the latest time and then we loop so in the main loop we say is it the first time or has the DST switch changed its position if so do the DST check 
and then we say first time's false. So that condition will only happen once, first time you go through the loop. And then we call an update, but it will only update it if the interval has passed. And then we just update the screen with the current time, and we toggle the colon on or off. And that's pretty much it. So there should be enough information for you now to be able to go and do this, um, put it on, set it up and run it. Okay, this is the demo section. We've got the clock already loaded up with the program and it's on and it's showing you the time, which is correct for where I am. Um, but there are three things that I want to just point out that were errors in the video. Um, one is that I had, not in the video, but in the code, I had DST on and off swapped round, so they were the wrong way round. Uh, had no material difference, it was just how, how it was being reported on screen. And the DST pin is now on GPIO pin 0. Um, and also I've added a separate time zone offset so that you can have that in addition to your daylight savings time that might be in your location. And you can actually see that here. I've added those extra ones in. So that all works. That being said, let me just get on and upload it so you can see it actually happening and what happens on the screen. So let me just see if I can pull up this window a little bit and drag this a bit further up. So it's just compiling now. Uh, sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's slow. I don't know why it does that. It really begs the question as to why it is inconsistent. But that is the Arduino IDE for you, I think. That's why I usually use Visual Studio Code and Platform I own, which is a far superior IDE, in my opinion. But I did it on the IDE for Arduino because I knew that most people will use that, so it would be easier. So this is fairly rapid. And there we go. And here it is, trying to connect. You are connected. Daylight savings on. And it says 16.43. Now if I flick the switch on the bottom, daylight savings off. It's 15.43. Put it the other way. It's 16.43. So that all works. And that's fine. And I'll just show you the back. That's a little switch. On the back, I had to change these screws because they were interfering with the switch. And um, we're going to have more updates on this, new features and so forth in upcoming episodes. So if you haven't subscribed, it would be really great for you to subscribe so you don't miss another episode from me. And with that being said, I wish you a fantastic day and I will see you next time.